Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Game Tidacom video, we're going to be doing something a bit different. We're going to be previewing a 300 series motherboard from Intel. This motherboard is provided to us by MSI and is the Z370 Gaming Pro Carbon slash AC. Now, this was sent to us with the idea of actually previewing the board, showing you guys what it actually looks like, the specifications, you know, what it comes with and all that stuff. However, I decided just pretty much last minute to do something a bit different and to do a kind of unboxing type of thing and then go into the specifications because I've already actually done the unboxing. I'm recording this uh, last, which is kind of weird, but kind of it is what it is. And I just wanted to kind of give my opinions of the board as I was going through it with you first time. So we'll be doing the unboxing first and then straight after that uh, we'll be jumping into the video, you know, with all of the close shot up shots, you know, high resolution shots, images and all that stuff, going through the accessories of the board, the specifications on all of the other bits and pieces. There will be a full uh, review coming next month. Currently Intel have most of the review CPUs on lockdown, so obviously they don't want results leaking out to the internet, at least any more than what they already have. So do join us next month when of course we'll be uh, testing this against the various Ryzen CPUs, of course Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7, along with the 6 and 7000 series CPUs, so that'll be like 7700K, 6700K, you get the idea. One thing to note is this motherboard was sent to us for review slash preview purposes. However, no money is exchanged hands, therefore all opinions are our own. Um, once again, thanks to MSI for making this possible. And uh, well, with all of that said, let's just jump right into this. As you can see, this is very impromptu, hence the very tiny table, but it is what it is. I just decided this would be kind of a fun addition to the video. So, uh, I'm just going to quickly close that just so things don't fall out and, you know, MSI kill me. <laughs> yeah, because this is a review sample that has to go to other members of the press after this, so they probably wouldn't appreciate it. But, um, you know, very nice packaging, as you can imagine. It's a fairly premium board. Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to discuss pricing yet. That's why I'm not saying that. There's some things I cannot discuss because it's under NDA, unfortunately. I'd love to tell you, but it is what it is, so I don't want to get in trouble. Um, so of course this is based on the Z370 chipset, which it tells you, as well as the normal support for Intel's Optane technology and all of the other bits and pieces. Uh, DDR4 boost, steel armor, M2 shields, very much the technology that MSI have been pushing on their motherboards for some time. RGB support, of course, with Mystic Lighting, which I'll grant you is kind of a love it or hate it thing. Basically, this board features all of the, uh, well, features that you would expect for a board of this type of caliber. Now, I'm going to open this up very gingerly, might I add. There we go. Alright, there's actually something in here I'm going to have to cut out. It's actually got um, some performance numbers that I can't reveal uh, because I'm under NDA and Intel, and Intel would not be happy with me. So this bit's going to be cut. Really nice looking board. Uh, obviously it feels quite hefty. You've got, I'm just going to put this down so I can kind of point them out to you on camera. I'm just going to also kind of move this over. So of course you've got the couple of M um, steel armor slots, one that's not reinforced, the M2 shield, which does look rather spiffy. Obviously you've got the screw there if you want to remove it, as well as all of the uh, RGB lighting support. I'm just going to spin this so I can see. Uh, several SIS fans, uh, jumpers, USB support, uh, six SATA ports, I believe. USB free, of course. I know this is going to shock you. Power support, um, 24 pin power, not power support. Uh, pump, uh, is that pump? Yeah, pump fan, sys fan, CPU fan. I will put up uh, full specifications on the screen anyway. Uh, system fan, and again, so you've got an absolute plethora, a multitude, a bonkers amount of headers, to be honest with you. So you shouldn't really have too much to complain. One thing that immediately strikes me about this board is I do like the location of the headers. Uh, especially around this area, you've got a nice number of headers at the bottom, which is always handy. Um, some boards do kind of tend to clump those in the middle, although it's not as common as it used to be, thankfully. So that's quite nice if you're someone who's fastidious about cable management. I actually really like the colouring as well. Um, I know a lot of boards now kind of have this very kind of steel, grey, kind of muted tones, but I think it works really well because if you are someone who doesn't particularly enjoy 
the RGB element. So if you're not someone who necessarily wants a windowed case, or perhaps they do, but they want it as a very muted affair, then that's quite handy. Basically, if you've seen a, I don't know, 1151 socket before, you pretty much have a good understanding on how that works. I'm just going to leave that like that for now because I've got to take some photos of it anyways. There's not much point in me putting on just for a few minutes. It seemed a bit pointless. Uh, four DDR4 uh, slots, not too surprising. And that's pretty much it. Of course, you've got the CPU power there. For those who haven't seen that, I'm just going to spin it real quick. Hopefully you can get a good look of that. As I said, I will be doing close-ups anyway. And it, it's a really nice looking board at the rear. Well, you've pretty much got everything you would expect. Obviously, you've got a PS2 connection if you somehow want that as a keyboard. Multiple USB uh, headers, including, of course, USB 3.1s, uh, all the audio ports. I'm just going to spin this real quick as well so you can kind of get an idea of what that looks like at the back. What do we actually have inside the box? Well, the usual gubbins. A driver CD, which, let's face it, no one in their right mind would use. You're just going to download this from the internet, as usual, especially if you've bought a new motherboard. I know I'm kind of lecturing to people who are very interested in PCs, so they probably don't need to say this, but if you aren't too familiar, generally, my advice to you, just with the PC you have, just download the latest drivers, the latest BIOSes, and everything else from the internet, including, of course, your graphics card drivers, sound card drivers, Ethernet drivers, whatever, and basically use those. These are great Frisbees. They can be handy in very, very, very rare circumstances. Um, you've got a uh, thank you for choosing an MSI product. Well, in this case, I guess te technically it chose us. I'm just gonna plop everything over there. Another handy thing, in case you're not familiar with what this is, I'm going to put that a bit close to the camera. I have no idea how well you can see that. But essentially, it is just to label SATA cables or whatever else, basically. Um, it just is a nice note. So you don't need to concern yourself with what the hell cable am I unplugging. So that's quite nice. A quick installation guide. Which is going to shock no one. It's basically just how to install a CPU. I won't insult you by needing to show you that because I think most of you probably know that. Um, an SLI bridge. I'll quickly show you this one. You can actually open it. It's, it's, there you go. Yeah, yeah, go, little fella. Looks quite nice, actually. And plonk that there. Couple of Wi-Fi antennas, which obviously not so much handy if you're using an Ethernet, but if you are using a Wi-Fi connector, I'm sorry, Wi-Fi signal, not Wi-Fi connector. If you are using a Wi-Fi uh, signal, then that's quite nice. There's also a uh, installation guide, which is basically paper thin. Quite literally, it's like maybe, you know, matchstick thick. Uh, Rear I.O. shield, looks quite nice. Padded at the back, which is kind of handy, actually. I remember back in the day, these things used to be an absolute unpleasant experience sometimes, especially with cheaper cases. They just literally used to rip your freaking hands apart. That was not a pleasant experience. What's this? Ah, uh, that's the actual Wi-Fi card itself. Quite nice. If you choose to, you know, eat that uh, space up, you know, your PCIe slot, you can do that. So it's basically up to you if you want to take up one of your PCIe slots for uh, Wi-Fi. I'm going to just plonk that in there. Screw. Uh, one, no, that's not USB. Okay, so you've got various headers, various connector headers, fan headers, that type of stuff. Uh, RGB headers. Yep. Pretty much what you'd expect, various headers and converters there. I'll put on screen what they are. And finally, a couple of SATA connectors as well, because you can never have too many of these things. And finally, the motherboard manual, which of course 
pretty much go through what you get. I'm just going to quickly read out what you actually do get with this. Uh, driver's disc and utilities, motherboard man manual, which is obviously this. Rear IO shield, SATA cable labels, SLI bridge connector, one to two RGB LED extension wire cables, which are 80cm. A rainbow RGB LED extension cable, which is also 80cm. A Corsair HD RGB LED cable, which is 50cm. A Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth PCIe card. That's actually really nice. I didn't also realize it did Bluetooth, so that's quite handy. USB cable, a screw, which is obviously to um, plug in, sorry, put in the uh, Wi-Fi. A couple of antennas, and that's about your lot. So what about the board specifications? Well, it does support 64 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. That's using dual channel four slots, 4,000 plus megahertz with overclocking. There's three PCIe 3.0 slots. They're running at times 16 and also three PCIe 3.01 slots. Two of the PCIe 3 slots are of course supporting steel armor. This means that uh, the board can feature two-way SLI or three-way crossfire. Two uh, M.2 slots with shielding and for uh, USBs we have uh, one USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type C and also a singular USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type A, eight USB 3.1 Gen 1s and also six USB 2s if you need that amount. Audio is taken care of with Realtek ALC1220 uh, codec with 7.1 channel high definition audio and of course it does also support uh, Nehemic. And for those wondering about overclocking and that type of stuff, yes the board supports it. Can't discuss that too much in this particular preview, however there are 11 power phases as well which does help to provide uh, stable voltages to the CPU. Uh, lastly, for features you've of course got stuff like the killer Wi-Fi and killer LAN support, steel armor across the DDR4 memory slots, two of the PCIe slots. There's a uh, shielding over the M2 slot, which MSI claims to reduce temperatures. A frankly ludicrous amount of support for color customization, thanks to Mystic Lighting. And a plethora of fan headers, um, temperature sensors, and all of the other things you would expect in a high-end board. I'm going to leave you now with a few uh, close uh, up shots of the motherboard itself as I close out the video. Uh, once again, thanks to MSI for the opportunity to preview the motherboard. Once again, no money has exchanged hands. This is purely my own opinion. Uh, hopefully there will be a full review of Coffee Lake coming up on the channel in the not too distant future. So if you're not already a subscriber, please feel free to do that. Normal stuff if you've enjoyed the video. Well, you know, like, share it. That would be greatly appreciated. And thanks very much to you for watching. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.